Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm Cisco CCNA, CCMP and Palo Alto Certified Instructor. On this video we are covering PCNSA 210 and this is our Chapter 3 Security and NAT Policies. This is the fifth video of Chapter 3 which is 3.5 Lab Security and NAT Policies. So now in this video we put everything together whatever we learned in Chapter 3 we put it into our lab. And the lab is going to be, the first thing we're going to do in the lab, we're going to create tags to use them later with the security policy. Now, if you remember the tags, they were color-coded labels that were enabling us to group something or sort and filter object using keywords. Then we're going to create a basic source net to, uh, rule to allow outbound access and associate security policy rule to allow the traffic. So we first create the source net and then we create the security policy to associate them. And then the second thing we're going to create the destination NAT rule for the FTP server and create another security policy to associate with that to allow the tra traffic. So this is a lab topology that we'll be using. Now it's already it has a basic configuration and if you don't know how to configure the basic one you should watch the videos uh, in chapter 1 and chapter 2. I already have an zones configured and I already have interfaces placed in that zone with the correct IP addresses. So um, on this video, we have covered uh, chapter three, whatever we covered in chapter three, which is NAT, and we have a source NAT and we have a destination NAT. We're going to both configure them and we're going to configure security policy as well, security policy as well. And the idea is like this. It's like we're going to create a source NAT that will translate IP addresses and port numbers from this network. Anything from 192.168.1, uh, sorry, 192, 192, 168.1.0 forward slash 24. Anything on that network going to outside, we will create a NAT policy there. That's a source NAT. And then we create the security policy as well. And then we can create the destinations that destination NAT, anything that comes from outside to our demilitarized zone. Okay. So I already have, if I show you, uh, I already have a connection to my firewall. And uh, if, as you can see, there's nothing on the policies. We only have the default intra zone and inter zone policies, which are read only, but we can we can override that if you want to. And uh, to do that, you just select the policy and then select override. And then you can change, for example, login or even action settings. And we don't have any NAT policies either. And I already have my machine, the PC, in our network, inside the network. If you have a look at our topology, we have a Windows 7 and the firewall I just showed you. So Windows 7 is this one here. And if I go to open a command prompt and just check it, IP config, I have 192.168.1.200, that's the IP address of the PC. And if you compare it to that, that's that address. And the gateway is 192.168.1.1, which is this address of the internal address on the firewall. I should be able to ping that gateway IP address, so ping 192. 168.1.1 and I've got a reply from my gateway I should not be able to ping anything outside for example like a Google server I'm not able to ping because there is no NAT or there is no actually security policy that's that's interzone communication anyway if I go to my firewall again so the first thing was that we're gonna configure if uh, is we're gonna configure tags that we're going to use them with a security policy and to configure tags which are uh, color coded uh, labels you go to objects and then tags and uh, they already predefined two tags but we're going to create our own tag so for example the first is going to be in um, in to out in to out and this tag is going to be we put the color you can just put green, for example, green, and um, in the comments you can put more comments into out, 
and then we have another color um, for example or another tag out to uh, DMZ DMZ and let's put uh, for example um, a red color for this and maybe um, into in to DMZ and um, for this maybe for the color let's put yellow okay so these are three different tags that so we can apply them on our security policy and we can use them to uh, search or filter objects the next thing is we're going to configure is the NAT rule so for that we need to go to policies and we select NAT and then click add and the idea is that we're going to we're going to configure a rule from inside going to outside so from internal zone with our network IP address so uh, dynamic NAT dynamic IP and port NAT from in to out um, in to out and you can put in description you know something that makes sense is something that when you come six months down the line you know what this NAT policy rule is actually doing and then we're gonna we can put a tag for example for this tag let's put in to out and um, if we want to grow if we want to group rules by this tag we can just put that into out as well this is a NAT type is IPv4 we can have IP NAT64 or NAT v6 and audit cr cr uh, comments for example um, by asterisk date and time here you would put right the original packet now this is how the packet will look like before it actually be is translated the original packet the source is going to be from inside and the destination where is it going to is going to go to outside and the destination interface is going to be ethernet 11 now source address we can put the address of our network um, for example 192.168.1.0 24 that means everybody in our network all the pcs in our network and then we could have created the address object to have this as a name rather than just ip address but for that you should watch the videos it goes in more detail in how to create in a security policy rules then the address the uh, once the address is matched then we translate the address and we click on the translate address as you can see there's two types of translations we can do we can either do source address translation which is this one here source address translation or we can configure here destination address translation we do this after first we're going to do a source address translation so the what is going to happen is translation type so once there's a match we're going to translate a port and the ip address uh, or we can have a destination address for destination sorry source address translation just the ip address without the port or we can have static but no this time we're doing dynamic ip and port and we can we can translate it to some address that we have purchased and we can add them here or we can translate it into a specific outside interface which is ethernet in our case is ethernet 11 so if you look have a look at here um, for example we take it from this network wherever it's coming and we're going to translate to this ethernet e11 interface and then this is the ip address so ethernet 11 and that's the ip address okay now that's that's our nat policy done so inside to outside so source inside to outside destination interface ethernet 11 source address any address on that network destination address any services we said any and then that's going to happen once it's translated to test this i'm going to actually um, ping that google server so ping 8.8.8 .8 and i'm going to set continuous ping as soon as we actually commit the NAT and the policy rule this things that should be actually starting to work so if I go back I've done the NAT now I need to do security policy rule so in security policy rule is a top top to bottom list is gonna read it yes yeah? so the most uh, explicit rules they need to be on the top these are two implicit rules anyway so I'll click add and um, this is gonna be in into out in to out rule 
and rule type you can see it's universal we can have intra zone or inter zone so universal and description it's up to you like same as with nat and tags again this one i'm going to put into out and then uh, green uh, group rules by tab by tags and now the green tag into out and again the comments yeah so i'm not going to actually type these because it's just increase the time in our videos but you need to write the comments so source address is source is going to be uh sorry so source zone we're going to be from inside and uh source address again i can put my address see now if i had my address uh, object i can just put them instead of writing them all this time like this i can just click on that and it will appear okay so user we haven't got any user id at the moment we just can keep as a user and all of these check here the videos 3.1 explains what these are and um, destination destination zone is going to be outside and uh, application again we haven't we haven't talked about app id or service url category nothing we just leave it a default and the action is going to be allowed look we log in at the session end we can log at the session start but that's what troubleshooting the action we can say for example allow or deny deny obviously it's going to drop allow is going to forward the traffic or we can say drop drop we can send obviously it will drop the traffic the packet but it will reply with the icmp unreachable message same thing we can say it reset client reset server reset both they will if we say for example reset both the client and the server the client is the initiator the server is responder we can send them icmp and reachable as well but this time we're going to allow the traffic we have not configured any login so we're just going to leave that as none profile setting this is the next chapter at chapter five i think and then key other settings like we can schedule we haven't created a schedule on qs marking now the schedule for example i have done it on, on the video 3.2 or 3.3 i'm not sure but you should be watching them like i said they go is more detail so we created the pol security policy that will be associated with the net policy and it will allow that traffic right if i commit this after i committed when I, once i go back to my pc i should see uh, replies i'm gonna press commit commit again okay now the committed has been completed successfully i can close this and i already can see some hit counts i can see uh first hit last hit and hit count so i'm pretty sure that this is replying now absolutely so that policy is actually working we have a um we can have a hit count on the on the NAT rule as well as security rule so I can see in the security rule I have a hit count but if I look at the NAT rule as well I'm gonna have a hit count on that as well see that is working as well okay it's not just just those things I can I can for example now even open a Facebook or any other it will work because we have not identified what application we just said any application so I can open Facebook I can ping everything should work all right so um, let me just yeah log in in there and I see and we can also see in the monitor so if I go to monitor and uh, logs and then traffic I can see my PC is actually talking to the Google server um, DNS is pinging it as well and later on there's gonna be appearance on Facebook and whatever applications I use like a web browsing so we see Google base as well there the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a destination NAT. Now, if you look at the lab, for the destination NAT, what are we going to do? Um, we're going to use this um, FTP server. So what we're going to do, this uh, uh, server, Ubuntu server, has an FTP service running on it. And uh, we're going to create a destination NAT that's going to allow traffic from the internet coming and accessing that FTP server. Now, this firewall, we're gonna, it's going to translate so if you say for example 
um, let's just use that server's IP address. Let's create that Ubuntu server's IP address as uh, 203.0.113.113.10, right? Since he has 10 inside, we're going to keep it as 10 outside as well. Right. When this when this PC located in outside zone is trying to access this IP address, then then the firewall will translate that address to this address. So destination that address will be become destination to this address. And uh, to do that, I need to actually because I don't have another Windows 7 machine, I'm going to actually show you how I'm going to move this PC from inside to outside, right? Easy. Um, okay, so the first thing is I'm going to access my PC, so here, close all, all of this, uh, cancel this, and then what I'm going to do is just change the, the settings. So on the settings, I'm going to go from VM1, VMNet1, and the server, uh, the outside zone is VMNet2. So I'm going to click that and click OK. Then I'm going to go to the control panel and change the IP address to say that it's outside. So start control panel, and then network and internet, network and sharing center. And in here, I'm going to change the adaptive center. I'm just going to give an IP address from outside. And if you look at my uh, topology, it's 203.0.113.200. And, and dot one is going to be the gateway. So properties of IPv4 and then this I'm going to put 203.0.113. dot was it 200 yes same my same subnet mask but the gateway is going to be 203.0.113.1 and click OK now this PC has magically moved from intern inside to outside and I'm going to try and ping the gateway so open the command prompt and um, do an IP config now. You can see that IP address. And then ping the gateway. So 203.0.113.1. And I have access to my gateway. But if I ping, for example, the IP address of the server, which we said um, dot 10, 203.0.113.10, it's not going to work, right? Because obviously we don't have any, any configuration. And what we want is when I do an FTP, to that IP address, I should have something reply. So if I do FTP 203.0.113.10, I should get reply. I should have an access where I can put my username and password. Anyway, that's the idea. So what I'm going to do is go to the policies, and uh, this time I'm going to create a destination net. So add. So it's going to be. Uh, outside to DMZ and uh, tags I'm going to put out to DMZ red and another red on the group original packet the source is going to come from outside so anything from outside destination zone now you have to be careful here destination zone is actually in outside so from outside to outside so here I'm going to put destination zone outside Source address is any, because I, I don't know the source address. And destination address is actually one address. So we're going to put 203.0.113.113.10. Right. And then what we're going to do when it's translated, translated, we're going to do destination address here. And translation type is going to be um, well, we can do a static or we can do dynamic or none. We're going to do static, and the translated address is going to be 192.168.50.10. We can also translate it the port if we want to. For example, if somebody is trying to go to this web server in port 80 and our web server is actually working in 8080, we can actually transfer, translate the port as well and just click OK here. Now that's our demilitarized zone, out to demilitarized, so out to DMZ. Sources is outside, destination is outside. 
so it's a pre-nat translation so translated what I, what is going to look like before it's been translated um, so any source doesn't uh, the, everybody on the internet come into that server and the translated is going to be a destination translation here and um, now the second thing is we're going to create a security policy to associate this NAT rule so it will allow traffic. So go to security and um, in here we have to worry about the destination zone is going to be after the NAT has been translated. The only thing is after the translation. So out to, uh, out to DMZ and I'm going to leave this empty now source is well it's going source zone is outside and source address any nothing for user destination zone now this is post not after the translation has happened so destination is going to be the de demilitarized zone and the destination address we can put the destination address of the server which is uh, 192 um, sorry, this is the pre-NAT, so 203.0.113.10 and we can allow that traffic and log it and click OK. Now, that's the configuration done, so show you again, the NAT was zone is outside, destination zone is outside, so pre-NAT everything. Um, source interface, source address any, destination address any, oh no sorry, destination address of the server. And then what, how are we going to translate that address? Well, it's going to translate it to the service address, 50.10. And then on security policies, it's everything is pre-NAT, except the destination zone. Destination zone is DMZ. So pre-NAT zone is outside, source is any. Destination zone is DMZ, then pre-NAT IP address and the application. And, clear, and everything it seems okay. Let's see, commit, and then we go and test it. Okay, now that we have committed successfully, we can close that. And I'm going to go to my PC. This now is an outside location. And I'm going to try to, it's already in, you see? It's already in because it was already. Okay, so let me exit from that and I'll quit or buy. And then try again. So FTP 203.0.113.10. And I have connection here. So if I go to my uh, firewall and go to monitor, then logs, then traffic, then you can see that I'm logging on traffic from, I'm coming from demilitarized, demilitarized zone. Um, no, from outside going to DMZ and then that's the IP address of my PC. And that's going to here on using port 21 and FTP. We follow uh, we are the application, and then the returning traffic as well is allowing. Then we can go in more detail of the packet. So we can, if I click on this magnifying glass here, then it will open a bit more detail about those packets, the source address, um, and then destination address. Then what we do in the NAT IP address translation. Okay, excellent. Thank you for watching lesson or lab 3.5, security and NAT policies. This is of chapter three, security and NAT policy. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici, bye-bye.